CBS 2 investigates tonight. Last year, Chicago reported nearly 3,000 shootings. Many of the victims did not survive. For those who did, it was a life altering experience. And for every survivor, there's a caregiver whose life is also changed forever. CBS 2 investigator Megan Hickey shows us why caring for the caregivers can help solve the city's epidemic of violence. I've been living below zero for negative 27 years. Upside down, feet to the heavens and head tucked in the ground in fear of hearing the sound of truth. I've been implanted in the deepest and darkest of graves, mentally enslaved and taught to misbehave. An ex-con turned poet. I sought the truth, but I did not know the truth was a light. On the deployments. A lieutenant colonel and surgeon with six deployments under his belt. Most of the injuries were gunshot victims or IED blasts. We have to Stop the bleeding. A Southside native and U.S. Navy veteran trying to help his community. Before we can look at addressing the problem. The last thing I want to hear is why a patient came to me. A trauma surgeon saving lives every day in U Chicago's trauma center. Because I, a lot of that is conjecture. And two courageous Army nurses. My goal is to work as quickly and efficiently as possible to get that patient stabilized and then get them where they need to go. We think about penetrating trauma, we think about blood, we think about all of these things, but we don't think about the long term. They come from different corners of the country, different backgrounds with uniquely different experiences, but they have one thing in common, whether they know it or not. I think most of the caregivers don't realize they're a caregiver. They don't, it's not the title they use, they just see it as I'm taking care of my family member. It hadn't clicked with me that I myself am a caregiver. While that might seem obvious that these surgeons would be considered caregivers, Everything Michael Johnson's caregiver. caregiver journey was a bit different. The first time I was in prison, it was for uh, a bank robbery. I had uh, two brothers who committed suicide and a mother who died in an attic. Um, and in 2018, my cousin was shot. He experienced plenty of suffering before he ever ended up in U Chicago's trauma department. His cousin sustained an ultimately fatal gunshot wound, and Michael took care of him for months in the hospital. There were um, family members that were hostile to the caregivers, and I, I just found myself stepping in to try to calm the situations down. And before I knew it, I was all over the, the, the ICU unit. Uh, in and out of rooms, just, you know, helping wherever I could. And um, I believe it was the nurse that took notice. She was, you don't work here? I said, no. So why were you helping those people? I said, because we're all human beings and that's what we're supposed to do. And because of that, Michael landed a job as a violence recovery specialist, helping victims and their caregivers through the pervasive waves of trauma caused by Chicago's gun violence. Do you think the, the caregivers are forgotten sometimes? Yeah, often. Which is why he and an army of others are taking part in a brand new course starting June 11th to take a look at how caregivers can aid others and themselves. The free course will be taught at Malcolm X College by faculty at the University of Chicago and City Colleges of Chicago. One of the participants already lined up, Leo, the high fidelity training mannequin, one of several at Malcolm X College's simulation lab. This is exactly what you're going to have to do. The tubing will come out and you could put the wound on like this and then you would tape it in the corner like that. That will help instruct new caregivers on how to take care of their loved ones, their physical wounds, administer their medications, something as simple as getting them in and out of bed. No, we, I, I was just putting the sheet under so we can just draw sheet them. A brand new challenge from the moment they're sent home. To start their lives in what is sometimes a new normal for these patients and their loved ones. But the course doesn't stop there. So I think there are tons of people who are surviving um, these situations um, and then they're put back into a situation with a family member or a friend who doesn't have that understanding of how to care for them. Terrell Odom is at the helm of the whole project. He came back from active duty with the U.S. Navy to two parents in need of critical care and no idea what he was doing or the toll it would take on him emotionally. So how do you better care for yourself? I wish someone had told me years ago when I was dealing with my parents, um, Terrell, take some time off. 
And members of the military will tell you there's a disparity between the support network veterans are met with and the civilian patients with gunshot wounds being discharged from the hospital. UChicago's Level 1 Trauma Center has only been open for five years, and in that time, they've cared for more than 18,000 patients. 40% are what are known as penetrating injuries, gunshot wounds, and stabbings. You know, for most people, they think... Lieutenant Colonel and active duty Army Surgeon Timothy Plackett has worked in these trauma bays since 2021. If you're you know, injured in combat, we have an entire VA system that's built to help you and take care of you. And, you know, we put a ton of resources into that. But if you're a civilian and you have a very similar injury, there are services out there, but it's not as proactive at reaching out to you. And so we need to do more to try to help plug people into these while also building a more comprehensive system. That's despite the fact that one recent study found that young men in some Chicago zip codes are more likely to be shot and killed than American soldiers were in Afghanistan or Iraq. Do you think yes. about what what happens when they go home? Yes, um, <laughs> constantly. Yeah. So I think the purpose of this program is, OK, you have the motivation there. We have somebody who wants to help this person continue to improve and regain function. Let's provide them with all the tools available. The resources for caregivers exist, but need highlighting, explained Army Captain Alexandra Barikian, an ER nurse at UChicago. Why do you think that a, a caregiver's course like this, particularly in Chicago, is necessary? Well, I think that's half the battle is understanding what resources you have available to you. If you don't know that those resources are available, you're not going to use, utilize them. Because ending the cycle of violence starts with healing everyone connected to the trauma. It's not about fighting a war against a community. It's about trying to provide a community with the appropriate resources they need to actually live a full uh, life that's safe from injury and violence. The Chicago Caregivers course is a four week comprehensive course and it's not too late to sign up. It starts on Monday, June 11th. For more details, head to our website and click this story. In the loop, Megan Hickey, CBS 2 Investigators.